I have one question to start us off today. Did you make your bed this morning? If the answer is no, this book is for you. If the answer is yes, this book is still for you. <laughs> make Your Bed was written by retired U.S. Navy Admiral William H. McRaven. Admiral McRaven goes through 10 principles that he learned during Navy SEAL training, and he talks about how they helped him throughout his career and just life in general. This is a very small, enjoyable book with inspiring stories that really stick. And if you don't feel like buying a copy, the audiobook is on YouTube. Personally, I love to read and listen at the same time. Supposedly, it's supposed to help you learn more words, which I'm not sure about, but I really hope that it's true. Um, so just to set the stage, I grew up in a household where you were expected to make your bed, which I'm very thankful for. Definitely there was grace if you had a morning where you were really busy or you were running late, but in general, making your bed was the expectation. And so I think because I grew up making my bed, I never realized the impact it had on my day-to-day -day life or the impact that it can have. And I really wish this was an in-person talk so I could ask for a raise of hands if you make your bed every day. I just think it would be really interesting to know, but I do have the internet, so I did a quick search and just found from a poll some data that revealed a third of Americans always make their beds. Some other articles that I read said that people who make their bed every morning are more productive, have high levels of job satisfaction, and surprisingly enough, they get more sleep than those who don't make their bed. So uh, make your bed. <laughs> Obviously, based on the title of this book, Admiral McRaven has something to say about making your bed. For SEAL training, you had to make your bed every day and make your bed to perfection. The lieutenants would scrutinize how the bed was made and they would actually do a quarter test. So they would pull out a quarter and bounce it onto the bed and it should jump several inches off the bed. I'm not exactly sure what their standard was, but it should bounce because of how well the bed was made. That would not fly with my bed. I have like a fluffy duvet, but Admiral McRaven says, if you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride and it will encourage you to do another task and another and another. By the end of the day, the one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. So as you just said, making your bed helps you start your day off with a task completed and a task well done. And this is probably not the driving motivation behind us making our beds. We were not pulling up the sheet saying, oh, I'm completing a great task. No, we don't think that. But he continues on and says that making your bed reinforces the fact that little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things well or right, then you will never do the big things well or right. Someone recently commented on one of my videos with a takeaway that they had learned that has really stuck with me. It is how you do one thing is how you do everything. And that's a really deep thought, but if you make your bed well, then you're gonna do other tasks well. But if you're lazy in the little things, you'll be lazy in the big things. And you won't be ready to be strong in the bigger, harder things. This is a well-supported idea just throughout history. Even the Bible talks about if you are faithful with little, you will be faithful with much. So making up your bed is important and doing it in a good manner is important as well. So what it does is it starts off your day with a task completed, and then you can just build on that task. It's kind of like the snowball effect. It's easier once you get momentum going to continue going. And what came to mind was an analogy, um, was about ice cream. I think I talk about ice cream a lot. Ice cream, so once you start eating it, you really don't want to stop. And once you start accomplishing things, no matter how small, it is easier to continue. Just like running, once you start running, it's way easier to keep going. Starting is really the hardest part. And as I'm reading all these books, I had a wonderful moment of connecting some of my learnings. And if you've watched my video on Atomic Habits, there's this idea of habit stacking, where when you want to start a new habit, you stack it onto something you already do. So I didn't realize that making my bed was such an ingrained habit, but it got me thinking if there was something new that I wanted to impl implement into my routine, right after making my bed would be a great time and it could work well for you too. But I'm thinking about drinking a big glass of water uh, right after I make my bed. So we will see how that goes. 
And the other interesting thing that the author points out is that if you have had a really horrible day, you can come home and know that you did complete something and that you did do it well. And while that may seem small, we need to celebrate the small wins, the small things that we do well. And there have been days after I read this where I came home and dramatically said, well, at least I made my bed this morning, but it's true. If you want to change the world, you start off by making your bed. So every one of these principles in this book is very useful. I'm just gonna go over one more. I had a hard time choosing, of course, like always, but ultimately the idea that kept circling in my mind was failure can make you stronger. If you want to change the world, don't be afraid of the circus. So Admiral McRaven talks about how during SEAL training, he and his swim buddy struggled at the long swims and would often fall behind, which I, I would be right there with them. And when you fall behind or you fail to meet the standard of the event of the day, you can be put on the circus list. It's not fun. <laughs> the circus is an additional two hours of strength training, push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, basically my worst nightmare. And it's coupled with harassment by SEAL combat veterans who are trying to weed out the weak. So it's easy to see how the circus could be quite daunting. You've already been through training that day and obviously you weren't up to par, unfortunately. And then you have to go to more training, making you more tired for the next day, which could lead you to go to the circus again and again and again, like, like a big circle. But what Admiral McRaven found was that the more he and his swim buddy went to the circus, the better their swimming became. Not to spoil it, but in their final open ocean swim, they ended up being the first to complete it without the second pair in sight. And he says, the circus, which had started as punishment for failure, was making us stronger, faster, and more confident in the water. We were determined not to allow the circus to beat us. I don't know about you, but failure normally doesn't spark confidence within me. It feels more like sinking, not swimming, but it can inspire confidence if we don't let it defeat us. He closes the chapter by reminding us that we will all go through the circus. It is inevitable, so we shouldn't be afraid of it, but instead face it head on. Something I started doing to kind of combat this idea of failure is on my map, I started a notes section where I write down everything I'm learning in my job. So if I make a mistake, I write down what it was specifically and what I would do differently next time. And in that way, I am letting my past failures strengthen my future. It's been really cool to see what I'm learning and be able to look back on that and reflect. So maybe that would be helpful for you too. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for listening. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section and don't forget to follow the hashtag SpinalTap so you never miss another book review. And until next time, happy reading.